What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Crew Mode. It's episode number 42 returns today with the season finale part 2 of the final game of the season as we face Crystal Palace in the FA Cup final. Going for a domestic double after holding off Chelsea in the last episode to win the Premier League back to back. First time Liverpool have done it in the Premier League era finishing free clear of Chelsea. Palace themselves have had a uh, yeah, sort of like a mixed season really. 13th place back in the Premier League of course last year they were championship side and they won the Carabao Cup last year as a championship side by knocking us out in the semis and beating our former team Bournemouth in the finals so they're no strangers to the big heights of domestic cup finals just ask Alan Pardew but uh, yeah Crystal Palace in the Africa final and certainly favourites no doubt about it even though we did bottle it last year against them in the Carabao Cup semis so let's just crack straight on them yeah while some might say the FA Cup has lost its magic in recent years I firmly disagree it's always a date I look forward to in the football calendar right at the end of the season and I'm so excited for this one here hopefully we'll be able to wrap up a great season with a domestic double on my first domestic cup since joining Liverpool. Uh, Palace definitely underdogs, but their team's not bad to be fair. It's a 4 2 3 1 with Galini between the sticks and about four features. Minan Van Uyck, great budget right back in this year's game. Uh, Valiant, Robin Cock, and uh, Adaramola at left back. And Daishime and Jefferson Lerm make up the DM duo with Noni on that right hand side. Paxau on the left hand side. Great wide midfield duo there. And Killian for the supports. Barisha up top. Ever got fired up looking for a domestic double. The first double in the Doxy boy era, my first double as manager and Liverpool's first FA Cup in the post club era as well. Let's get it done. Come on Liverpool. Yeah, I love cup final day. As, as a kid it was just, again, I don't know if, if people, even when I was a kid, still considered it as important as the league. Oh, but um, yeah, yeah some, might, some might say it has lost lost a bit of magic since then. I, I, I disagree. I, I still think as a competition you still desperately want to win. And it's been some iconic finals over the years as well, some iconic moments. If you go back again, like the past 10 years, you can even think of the, the Alan Pardew Crystal Palace moment when he got to the FA Cup final and he did that dance. Um, believe me, you still want to win it. Oh, I took that on way too early there and flashed it wide of the post. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. You, you do not want to lose Cup Final Day, no matter what anyone says. It's, it's still got the importance of a... Um, of a, of, a, of a major honour of any kind, outside of, well, domestic at least. Yeah, no one's going to say, for example, that they would take the FA Cup over the Champions League. Obviously not, but if we're talking domestic honours, believe me, if you look at a player's career and you see, oh, they've won all these Premier Leagues, you know, but they haven't won the FA Cup. In fact, I think Rio Ferdinand is a good... Hang on. A wonderful build-up! Great save by Galini. I don't think Rio Ferdinand actually won the FA Cup in his career. I don't think, now I might be wrong, Manchester United fans, please do forgive me, but I'm pretty sure after he joined, they they, 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 they didn't win one. And believe me, it's an honor. He's, he's not gonna say no to the, the illustrious career he's had, winning a, a Champions League and getting to another two finals and winning so many Premier Leagues and a couple of League Cups as well. But believe me, you look at his cabinet, you'll, fit, you'll, you'll find something that's missing there and that is the FA Cup. I have to say, this has not been a classic thus far. Oh, Diaz, wonderful dribbling. Go on, keep going. Keep going. This is all Luis Diaz here. He's our teammates in support. This has been all Luis Diaz. Clark's header. Galini makes a very simple save. We, we've had the two minutes allocated, but the rest going to let's take the corner. So, chance to strike from this double situation and go a goal up right before the break. This will be a sucker punch for Palace, but instead they to defend it. We still get one last chance. Konate shot blocks and it will be cleared away. Half time, it's been quite tense. Quite tense indeed. And whilst we are the strong favourites for it, haven't really been at my best so far. I feel it's one of those games that the longer it goes on, eventually the quality is going to shine through and the underdog will start to struggle to stay level. But you never know, man. I got shades of Wigan versus Man City all those years ago. You never know. And actually, I've just looked this up at half time. Half time is always a good time to uh, check stats and. Uh, <laughs> verify what I was talking about was correct. Yes, Manchester United did win the FA Cup when Ferdinand was at the club, but at the time he was serving a, uh, a doping ban. Uh, obviously very controversial back then. I know it still irks him to this day. Uh, what happened there? Uh, oh, playing right through the So he didn't get a winner's medal for it. It's Cody. Yes! Finally gives us the lead five minutes after the restart. Yeah, you best believe Ferdinand will always be a little frustrated that he never got to add an FA Cup winner's medal to his cabinet, to his arsenal. 
or a player of elite mentality like he has. But I've got one, and I want my second, and I want it with a new club as well. Liverpool in front, courtesy of Cody. For those that never watch Rio Ferdinand play live, by the way, um, put it this way, there's a reason why he was the most expensive British defender when he joined Manchester United and why Ferguson spent so much money on him. Believe me, this guy was... Uh, would, you, would you call him a revolutionary? I'm sure Manchester United fans probably would, but he was certainly, let's just say, a, uh, a great ROI, if you will, in what was a, uh, a rapidly modernising game. Oh, no, I thought he was going to... Oh, for far. I thought Robin was going to come across. I could slide it across with Cody there, and the end, I could have just shot it. Even so, 1-0, but... We're in control here. We just we just don't need to do anything silly. But I want a second goal. I always say this. I'd never feel comfortable in just leading by one. I want a second goal to wrap this up. I mean, Palace haven't even had a shot in the entire game. So, you know, this is this is ours to lose from here. But unless I get a second goal, I'm not going to feel the job is done. Great build-up. There it is. There it is. It was coming. It was coming. It is one of those moments where it's like you, you're only leading by one, but you don't even feel like it's 1-0. You feel like it's 3-0 because you're in complete control. But you still want that second goal to wrap it up, and that will do it. Always would a player score against their former team. Eberet Gize from 12 yards, fires in against his ex side. That's it. Game over. Liverpool's name on the FA Cup for sure. There's a corner for Palace with 10 on the clock. It's an awful delivery there. Their, um, their final balls in this game have been absolutely awful. And it's the reason why they haven't even had a shot. I mean, it's just been... Salah! Oh! Thank you and farewell, Mr. Mo Salah. Brought him off the bench just for his final minute in pro football. It's not a bad way to bow out, is it? Between two players that may be playing their final games. I don't know if Robertson's going to be here next season, I to be fair. He's going down rapidly since... The, well, not rapidly, but gradually since the injury. And to be fair, Gallini probably should have done better. But that is the perfect farewell for Mo Salah. Wraps it up. With the third, game over, good night, total demolition job at Wembley. Well, I was worried about Man City versus Wigan. In the end, it was more like Man City versus Watford. Yep, complete control. Job really been done as soon as you got that first goal in the first, at the end of the second, at the start of the second half even. <laughs> and that is it, job done, game over, good night. First double of the save. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we were massive favourites, so I, I felt incredibly confident. E even at the break when we were still tied in 0 I felt it would, it, would, it would come at some point. I even touched on it. The longer the game goes on in moments like this, oftentimes, eventually, the underdog starts to lose their grip and their footing a little bit. Maybe a mistake here or there allowing someone in, or just, quite frankly, depleting energy levels. At some point, the, the higher quality team shows their pedigree eventually and that's exactly what happened started the second half off with more intensity got that early goal and once we did the floodgates kind of opened simple win in the end with all three goals coming in the second half and what a way to pow out for Salah as well Liverpool domestic double winners Yeah, I always say with me, you get the full story and the complete truth. If I've played poorly and been dominated, you're going to see it. You know, you're going to watch me get battered. If I've won, fortunately, I won't try and deny it. If I've had a bit of luck, I will be more than happy to admit that. But there are games like this where I was in control really from the first whistle. And this, in the end, proved to be reflected in the stats. A simple 3 0 win, you'll see it in a moment's time. And, 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 and yeah, Palace, they, they came forward quite a few times, to be fair, towards my area. But the problem was that their final balls were terrible. Granted, we did block a couple of crosses into the middle. Uh, and made a couple of tackles towards the edge, but other than that, it was mm, quite quite a routine job from a back four and goalkeeper in the end. And on the other end, in the second half, those three goals gave us that first FA Cup in the post-Klopp era with Liverpool, and 
My first double as manager as well, buzzing to finally get one. So, yeah, buzzing with that. I think, again, like, you know, last season it was the rebuild era. And I said it, we weren't in the Champions League. You know, we weren't in Europe at all last year. And really, we didn't need to do anything other than get in the top four, in my opinion. Yet the board, for some reason, said, win a domestic double. I was like, guys, know where you are right now. Like, seriously, it's a rebuild. It's our first season. But winning the Premier League and not winning the FA Cup, I still thought it was an amazing achievement. But this year, I felt we had to win a double. Last year, I didn't think we needed to. But this year, we had to win a double of some kind. Be it League in Europe or League and Cup or perhaps Cup in Europe. Strange double, but a double, regards. We had, we had to do it this year. And in the end, we, um, we, we did deliver. Luck, luck, luck at a cup draw, I guess. Facing a, uh, a non what you call big six side in the final, but considering Palace won the Carabao Cup last year, um, I, 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 I guess it still could have been uh, could have been more difficult had they been on it on the day. Even so, comfortable three to win FA Cup in the cabinet. So to end the season off, as always, we'll take a look at the other competitions and leagues around the world where you could say we won a treble this year, winning a Community Shield earlier this season. Of course, we don't really count that. But as the Carabao Cup this year, a refresher, uh, Manchester United won a thrilling nine goal thriller five four as Harry Kane finally got his first winners medal there, and of course a refresher in the FA Cup. Apart from last eight onwards, beating. Everton in the Merseyside derby, then beating Man City 1-0 in extra time at Wembley. And I wish I would say AET, AET after extra time. And then, of course, um, comfortably winning against Crystal Palace in the final by three goals to nil for our first double of the save. As for the Europa Conference League, for those curious what went on in Europe's bronze competition as well, well, Hearts, the Edinburgh side. I was there uh, uh, last weekend, uh, went all the way to the semis, uh, only to come up short to Fiorentina, who ended up winning the whole thing, beating Nice in the final by three goals to two. Yeah, I like Titan Castle. I thought it was quite nice. Someone was telling me that they, uh, they built their new stand, their main stand, only a few years ago as well. So I'd love to see the modernization there. But that's for the Europa League anyway. Look at that, a Red Bull semi-final. Salzburg v. Leipzig. Salzburg came out on top but came up short to Wolfsburg in the final, losing by two goals to nil. I wonder what would happen. Have they, have they met in real life? Does anyone know that? Have they ever met in a competition, European competition in real life? Because conflict of interest, right? They're both owned by the same franchise. I wonder what would happen if they, uh, maybe they have. Have they? Let me know. Yeah, I just saw they met in the Europa League group stage back in 2018. How about that? Very interesting. I didn't think that would be allowed, but fair enough. But anyway, uh, refresher of the Champions League. We, of course, got through to the quarterfinals, only to be knocked out by Real Madrid, narrowly by a goal to nil. Uh, they lost to Barca in an El Clasico final, and Chelsea made the final. And in the end, well, Chelsea did get that major honour in the end. We might have pipped them to the Premier League, but it's their third Champions League in history. And in fact, third, and what would that be now? 16 years? Pretty impressive when you think about it. So let's take a look at the other leagues around the world, starting with the Football League. This is one of my favourite parts of the finale, by the way, looking at the other leagues. Uh, Nottingham Forest champions, Luton second, the playoffs will be the Saints, the Hornets, Coventry City and Norwich City uh, as well. Pompey, top of League One, with Charlton Athletic in second, the playoffs being Blackpool, Oxford United, Reading and uh, Sheffield Wednesday in England's third tier this season. And as for League Two, the top three automatically promoted still Stevenage, Carlisle United and Cambridge United as well. And the players will be Bradford City, Northampton Town, Cobblers, no really, uh, Stockport and, uh, and Colchester United as well. Wow, uh, I did not expect to see that. Ligue 1, Paris Saint-Germain has definitely lost their stronghold on this because it's not the first time. In fact, I don't think it's the second time. I think it's the third time in the save in six years have not been champions. And this year, not even runners-up. Third place, PSG. Looked like they might need a reset there in uh, Ligue 1, finishing third this year in France. Bayern have definitely lost their stronghold as well. Five uh, behind Leverkusen, uh, who were champions this year as, uh, well, I guess Xabi Alonso must be happy he stayed at Bayern Leverkusen for all the Bundesliga's he's winning there. And I'm glad he did too, because I'm glad to be here at Liverpool right now. And as for the Serie A as well, uh, Juve, three clear of Milan and a whopping 14 clear of Roma and 15 clear of Inter uh, to win the Serie A title this year. Serie A is one of my favourite leagues in, in Karimo because it's, it's, it's a different winner every single year. There's never any continuity. Is that the right word? Continue. It's a different winner every year. It's, it's class. Feyenoord were the Eredivisie winners this year. Uh, PSV finishing third. Have you guys seen? They've had their loss, by the way. I've been talking about a lot this year. PSV were going for their undefeated season. In the end, it was NEC uh, that inflicted their first loss on them uh, throughout the entire 
league season, so won't do an unbeaten league year. It was final challenge this year in the save regardless. And as for the Liga, Portugal, uh, Sporting on top, Porto second and Benfica third. Normally it's always the same one, two, three, just in a different order. In this year's case, it was Sporting Lisbon champions. And as for the Cinch Premiership, normal service regime. We've seen Aberdeen win it a couple of times. Um, well, I say win it, be top after 33 games. As I said before, uh, in, in the SPL, the Scottish Premier League, it splits after the first phase. It goes into a second phase where the top six and the bottom six play each other. Uh, but uh, you can't check that in career mode, obviously. So you just got to assume whoever was uh, top goes on to win the whole thing. In this case, it would be Rangers. And as for whoops, that's the second division. But if you want to see that as your owner, we're top of that. And as for La Liga this year, Barcelona, as we knew, 16 clear of Real Madrid. They, they, they were dominating at this point uh, when we checked how they were getting on against Real Madrid. And they did indeed hold them off to win La Liga with Fletico finishing in fourth place there as well. And let's do a couple more. Switzerland uh, saw Lugano champions. I've barely showed this. Swiss League. But uh, I, I have a feeling, by the way, speaking of Red Bull clubs, we've seen their franchise expanding over the years. I have a feeling the next one is going to be in Switzerland. I've just got a feeling. Just got a feeling. But uh, anyway, the Turkish Super League was won by Travis on support this year with Galatasaray second and Fenerbahce in third. And as for the MLS, which has kind of just got going, really, uh, 17, 18 games in, it's FC Dallas who are top of both conferences, one clear of LAFC and four clear of Cincinnati. You know, I've, I've been asked a lot of times, speaking of New York teams, Red Bull are in 10th right now. I've been asked a lot of times, Doxy Boy, do you ever do an MLS career mode? I did manage LA Galaxy once, put them in the English Football League and did a club and country with them. I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all with the league continuing to rise in stature. It's great. Back in my day, people used to mock it and call it a retirement year. The fact it's risen in stature is brilliant, man. Love it. And uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Summertime fun career mode. MLS, first time ever. Certainly considering it. And the final thing we'll do to end season five and our second year with Liverpool is take one final look at our squad. And I've got to say, I'm really happy with it, man. Seriously. I love how we've rebuilt this side, honestly, from obscurity to what we have now, which is an absolutely class first 11 and bench. Yes, okay, there's not a great deal of quality and depth, but for the most part, I love how it's looking. In terms of the realism, bringing back former players that have left, in Investing in some younger players as well, like Rojas and McKenzie. I, I I really like how the team is looking, man. Oh, Salah, final appearance, and he bows out of a goal like that, man. you got to love it. But I, I love how the team is looking. I really do. And I'm so excited for next year as well, man. I'd say we're one superstar away from competing for the Champions League. But also for next year, we'll have some big big decisions to make. What do we do with two of the long-serving players that are both now declining? Alisson, who's been wearing the armband since Danilo's retirement at the end of last season. And also Andy Robertson as well. We knew at some point we looked to shift these guys on, both now in their mid-30s and both now starting to decline. Robertson had the injury. He's gone down a rating. Alisson's gone down by one, I think, as well, hasn't he? Um, no, I'm pretty sure he did get to 90. I think that's just back to what it was at the start of the season. So, yeah, they're both showing signs of decline anyway. And uh, maybe, just maybe, it's time to shift them on in the summer, say, fair play, or, or hopefully they'll retire at the end of the season, say, fair play, but... It's now time to think of the future. Regardless, really love how the team is looking, man. It's it's absolutely class. It's still getting better. There's some great young players here, some great players in their primes right now. And uh, what can I say? Man? I'm, lo I'm loving this stint with Liverpool. It's my first time using Liverpool in... God, I don't know how many years, man. Seriously, I, I don't know if I've used them since I did my iconic Sunderland save back in FIFA 13. Now, that was one of the first saves I ever did where I really felt the love from you guys. And I felt, okay, this is what I should be doing. Career my videos on YouTube, man. But, um, but yeah, I think it's the first time since then. And it's been so fun. Only two years here, but... Three major honours now with back-to-back -back Premier Leagues. First time Liverpool have won back-to-back -back Premier Leagues in the Premier League era. An FA Cup, so a domestic double. My first double as manager as well. Trent, by the way, what a, what a fantastic season playing him right back or CM. I think in the summer I might convert him to an official CM. But 10 assists and a goal in 52 games as well. So creative, as we know. Um... But yeah, I lost my train of thought. But I'm, I'm, I'm loving the save, man. I really, really am. And don't get me wrong, I am looking to start a new project very, very soon. I have teased it in the comments. I've teased it in the description. I've teased it on the socials. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Jonah Docs. I'm at Jonah Docs everywhere. Uh, I know I have teased starting a new save soon, but I don't want to end this one, man. I really, really, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it, man. It's so much fun for me to see Jack Clark staying at 90 this year, but would have gone up one had he not had the injury. He was sublime until that injury man 14 goals and 9 assists in 38 games averaging well over 7 all across the board 
had he not had that injury, this guy, I think, would have got to 20 goals. He was absolutely flying until the injury. What a signing he's been from our former team, born of Curtis Jones, though, by the way. I think he was one of my best players of the season. He had an amazing run as well around March, April time, where he was incredible. 11 goals and 6 assists in 25 league games. 11 goals and 8 and 37 overall. He and, he and Musa, absolutely brilliant through the middle of the part of this season. So, so good. And again, Eunice as well. So versatile. Played him right back. Played him left back a couple of times. This guy is class, man. I love the American to pieces. But um, yeah, I, uh, I am planning to start a new save at some point. I'm going to take his day off the CB development plan, by the way. I touched on this last year year for those that are curious why I've got him retrained as a centre half. For those that missed the season finale last year, basically, very briefly I'll say this, it's a great way to get certain stats up if you can't find a development plan that would focus on them wholeheartedly, if you will. So he's a, as we knew, the only negative to the guy was that he couldn't really defend and he wasn't blisteringly quick. But other than that, he just couldn't defend. So we put him on a CB development plan. We have no plans to turn Eze into a centre half. That's not the long term goal. It's just so we can get those defensive stats up. And now they have grown really nicely because the long term plan with Eze was to convert him to CM. So again, the reason why I started at CB is to focus on his weakest areas first and then it's an easier natural transition to a different position on the pitch so I always recommend that if you're looking to change a player's position or they've got a really weak area focus on the focus on changing position you don't have to change the position it doesn't need to be a complete transition but you can get their defensive stats up or possibly if they're a defense-based player but you want to be more effective on the other end you can get their offensive base stats up and then you can change position afterwards so now we're changing to cm and eventually convert him to an official cm as i try and turn this guy into a uh, box to box but um yeah i am looking to start a new save soon i'm very excited i've got a couple of projects in the pipeline i'm really really excited for don't want to give anything away but I'm very excited for a couple of projects I'll be starting very soon, but I have no plans to stop this save as well. I'm absolutely loving this save, man. And I would say it's been my favourite save since the Luton Town career mode. It's been so much fun. I often say, oh, Mo, enjoy your retirement, bro. All the years at Anfield. I wish you could give players testimonial games. You know, Football Manager, you can give players testimonial games. I wish you could give a player a testimonial when they're retiring because Mo certainly deserves one, man. But uh, what a way to bow out by scoring <laughs> in that uh, in that FA Cup final and getting to lift a Premier League title as well, of course. But um, but yeah, I, this has been my favourite save since the Luton Town career mode. Every year I do what I call a realistic career mode where the primary goal is on realism. And it always seems to go down with you guys. And this save has been no exception. Athena Jan's going down. Really? Oh, he did have an injury, to be fair. But, um, but yeah, it's been class, man. And I can't say thank you enough for all the support. And it's been brilliant. We've just won our first double of the save. We've got Liverpool their first FA Cup in the post club era. But next year, it's time. We're going to be going for the treble at Anfield. And my first European honour as manager as well. Season 6, right around the corner. I'm so excited for it. So, thank you for watching the finale, guys. Really, you have enjoyed the second second part of the season finale of season five if you've enjoyed it then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and we will return with a brand new season tomorrow afternoon the start of season six we're on the back of winning first the premier league and then a premier league and an fa cup yet yeah, if we're following the natural order of things next year we've got to target the treble right knocked out in the courts by real madrid this year but for next season we want to try and at the very least get to a champions league final and I'm going to be doing my absolute best to go after my first European honour to save and go for that treble as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Love the support. Appreciate you guys so much. As always, why I always say much love. You guys are fantastic. Really appreciate the love you give me on SC24. And this save's been no exception. And I cannot wait for season six of the realistic career mode. I, I hope you can tell in my voice. I'm having so much fun with this project. And I'm excited to continue it for a brand new season starting tomorrow. Much love, guys. And I'll see you at the start of season six very soon.